Hey Math 43, I wanted to go through this chapter nine bonus deep dive. These are some multiple choice questions. And like always, I would recommend trying them on your own first and then coming back and seeing how you're doing on this. So our first question deals with, hey, what is a p-value? And before we get into it, I wanna remind you, a p-value is a probability. And it's the probability that given, it's a conditional probability, given h naught is true, right? How likely is the sample data you saw due to chance? All right, so I, what it's trying to say here is when you run an experiment, something's gotta happen. You've gotta get a statistic from your sample and how likely is what you saw in your sample, how likely is that to, to occur if the null is true, right? Under this condition, this huge condition in every hypothesis test, that the null is true. So as I look at A through D, I wanna go through some answers that I would rule out. I'm gonna start with D, all right? This is talking about the significance level, which is alpha. Now alpha, it is a probability, but it's the probability of a type one error. That's what alpha is equal to. So what is the probability that you would reject the null when it was true? And while that's important, that's not what the p-value is. P-value is talking about how likely what you see in your sample, how likely is that to occur given the null is true. So this is the likelihood of a type one error. So D, D is out. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna go with that one. The next one I would think to rule out would be A. It's talking about results being statistically significant. Now that phrase statistically significant, uh, it's, it's an either or, like either your data is statistically significant or it's not. And we determine that by whether or not we rejected the null. So if you reject the null hypothesis, your data is statistically significant. If you don't reject the null, your data is not statistically significant. And while that's important, again, that's not what the p-value is telling you, right? So these things are important, but they're just not related to the p-value. And at least it does have the word probability in it. Although I would argue that significance level is still a probability. All right. Part B, it's saying what's the probability that your sample mean is equal to the population mean? And at least they're referencing sample data, comparing it to what, what's claimed in the null, the population data. But, but that's not what we're getting at, all right? We're not checking that your population mean and your sample mean are equal. Again, we're looking at a, a, a region of results. What's the likelihood that you would get your sample data just through chance, just because something has to happen pending the null was true? And here is the phrasing we're looking for in C. It's a probability that you would get results, right? You would see sample data, like you did, from random variation. That's a fancy word for just by chance. Again, just because when you run an experiment, something has to happen. All right, what type of error occurs if you reject the null when it is in fact true? All right, well, when you reject H0, you only have two choices, right? H0 and HA, all right? And I always call this the first equation versus the second equation. And I, I tend to put equation in, in quotes on the alternate because it's not technically a math equation, right? When you're talking about uh, the null, you would have something like mu equals 50. That's an equation because it has the equal sign. All right, if I was thinking about the null, you might see something like mu is greater than 50. And this is technically not an equation because it doesn't have an equal sign. Anyways, where I'm going with this is if the null is true, right? If the first equation is true, then you made a type one error, all right? So whenever you reject the null, you have the possibility of making a type one error. And when you fail to reject the null, that's when you have the possibility of making a type two error. And it's not an either or. You, you, you don't get to say, well, I might've made a type one or a type two. It's like you either made the type one or the type two. You can't do both at the same time. So you just wanna be careful with that. You would know at the end if you made the type one or type two. All right, so number three is probably the most intricate of them. I'm gonna do them mostly by hand, but I am gonna flip over to the iPhone app just to show you how to do it there. This is gonna be a hypothesis test. And again, the first thing we wanna talk about is what is the variable? So it says a pharmaceutical company claims that a medication will produce a desired effect for a mean time of 58.4 minutes. So there's a bunch of buzzwords. See mean, that's gonna tell me right there, I'm in mean land, right? I also see time and I see 58.4 minutes. So what I've figured out is I'm in mean land, my variable is time and my units 
are minutes. And as soon as you see units, you know you have a numerical variable and that pushes you into mean land. Whereas if I had a categorical variable, that would push me into proportion land. All right, and you have categorical variables a lot of times when, well, when proportions are <laughs> considered and you're looking at the number of successes and failures. Okay, so I've got my mean, my, uh, my population mean that they're claiming that this, this pharmaceutical company is saying 58.4 minutes. All right, but the government researcher runs a hypothesis test and I see this of 250 patients. So as soon as I see that, I know N is 250 which means my degrees of freedom are going to be 249. Oh, also, I'm just going to put a little note. This is a t-test. All right. And they have a sample mean. Here comes a statistic of 59.5 and a standard deviation of 8.3. And then it says, in which of the following intervals is the p-value located? All right, so I've got a bunch of data there. Now, as I look through this, this government researcher only ran this experiment once, so I have a one-sample t-test. And basically in chapter nine, you're always dealing with one samples. It's later chapters, if we got to them, that you would, you would deal with more than one sample. All right, so I've got a hypothesis test. If you want, you can do all 13 steps. I'm not going to do that right now because this is a multiple choice question, and I just don't need all of those steps. I really need to get to the p-value, and in order to do that, I need my hypotheses. So let me go with my null and my alternate, see if we can figure these out. And if I look, I'm going to have a mean. All right, now I've got 59.5 and 58.4 here. I need to extract from that the population mean, right? So I need the parameter, not the statistic. And you see X bar was based off of a sample, right? It was based off of those 250 folks. That is a statistic, right? This is the stat, which means that this number is my parameter, and that's what I'm going to put into the null. All right, and in terms of the alternate, it would either be a less than, a greater than, or a not equals to. And there's no information in here slanting it one way or the other. It doesn't say the government researcher thinks this time is too high or too low. All right, We weren't given any slant, so I'm going to go with a not equals to alternate. All right, That will give me a p-value that's twice the p-value of a one-sided test, but that's fine. All right, so this is steps two and three off of the hypothesis test. And again, I don't need to go through all of this. I don't need to check all of my assumptions. I can just move on to the p-value, p-value being step 11. And in order, in order to get there, I need to do steps 9 and 10. So step 9 would be to get my statistic. All right. And step 10 is going to be fill that in. So my sample mean for this problem was 59.5. My population mean was 58.4. And we've got 8.3 over the square root of 250. And I'm just going to tell you this number for right now. It's going to be 2.095. I am going to go ahead and show you how to do this on the um, iPhone app in just a moment, but you could also crunch it on your calculator. So if I think about what this graph might look like at this point, I've got my test statistic here all right, at 2.095. I have a, and I'm going to color code this a little differently, I have a two-sided alternate. So what that tells me to do is I need to find the area to the right of my test statistic, and then I need to mirror it over here on the left, all right? And I need to get that tail too. That's what a two-tailed test is. But these areas are the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna find this area, and then I'm gonna multiply it by two. I'm gonna double it for symmetry, and that'll give me my p-value. So if we look at this, my p-value, all right, I'm gonna do two times this right tail, I need to do the right, excuse me, I need to do a greater than because I have a right tail, so 2.095. This is gonna be two times TCDF, and we're gonna go low, high, and then I'm gonna go with degrees of freedom, okay? And when I crunch that, and just trust me on this, I will show it in a bit, I'm gonna get 0.037. All right, and then it's a matter of figuring out which of these intervals 0.037 falls into. And 0.037 is not less than 0.01. That's not what we want. It's actually larger, right? It's not between 0.025 and 0.05. It is in here, all right? It's between 0.025 and 0.05. So we're looking at C for our answer. And before we get out of here, I do want to show you this on the iPhone app. So let me pull this up, all right? Let me actually clear out of this. Let me just hit done, and then we'll go back to this. All right. So here's what I would do. I would hit my stat button. I would go to tests and I'm gonna do option two. That was the graph you saw me come in on. But let me show you how you would punch all of this in. 
So if I look here, my null hypothesis mean was 58.4, and I need to hit the Enter key. My sample mean was 59.5, hit the Enter key. My sample standard deviation was 8.3, hit the Enter key. And then last but not least, 250 for my sample size, hit the Enter key. Okay, now I need to mess with my alternate. All right, if you look right here at the bottom, I know it's kind of hard to describe, you can't see my hand. We have a less than alternate. And you're gonna see me toggle between these just so I can make the point here. I need to go to the not equals to alternate. And there we go. And then you can see on the not equals to alternate, you can see that the test statistic was 2.095, the p-value is 0.037, and you see the area shaded on both sides here. All right, but those numbers, 2.095 and 2.037, they match what we had here. All right, so that's how you run through um, number three. Thanks so much.